Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I've got the old CJ5 in the shop and it's getting a full four wheel disc brake conversion. From World War II on till about 76, drum brakes were standard on all these Jeeps, all the CJs up until I believe it's 75, 76 is when disc brakes started showing up. You can see this is four wheel drum. got a bunch of stuff to show y'all about this disc brake conversion we'll be taking these tires and wheels off just in a second the main thing though that's keeping this jeep from having brakes right now is the master cylinder is actually froze up there's almost no movement in this pedal right here it just hard stops something else that took jeep a while to catch on to was you can see down in there that's a single reservoir master cylinder which means if one brake line blows you have zero brakes Later on, around when this Jeep was made, like 65-ish, I want to say, 66, they did start putting those dual reservoir master cylinders on some of these Jeeps, especially the Buick ones. I believe all those got the dual reservoir. So the first thing I got to do is get the old master cylinder out of there. Let me show you all what I'm working with down here. I've got half of mine to just go ahead and cut this exhaust pipe off because it's just dangling here, and this is not the right way to do that. One job at a time though. So right here, this little skid plate, which I've never seen that before. That is what is hiding that master cylinder up in there. So I know there's a couple bolts on the master and it looks like maybe one right up in here holding the skid plate on. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and get all that pulled off. Now in the ideal world, all these brake lines right here would still be good. It looks like all of these are gonna give me trouble. A leg up though, I didn't know this on CJ5s, it looks like they do brake hose to frame instead of the brake hose down the axle. That's gonna make this disc brake conversion a little bit easier. I got all the old master cylinder stuff out. It looks like somebody's tried to get in this before and they snapped that little nut off the top. So this thing is just rusted up completely tight. No chance of fixing that. Now my original plan, I was gonna take this dual reservoir master cylinder that I had on the 3B off and here's the little bracket. This is a stock CJ5 bracket to mount a dual reservoir master cylinder. It bolts up underneath on the frame right here where your levers for your foot pedals pivot at there's two rivets you can cut them rivets out and then right here that matches that hole spacing so you can bolt it up in there and then you've got to drill two holes in the top of your frame rail and capture the top there this is a lot safer it's a lot better upgraded it's a bigger master cylinder a bigger bore I think it's gonna be more trouble than it's worth though. I don't even know how I would drill them top holes to be honest with you. So I called up Napa. They're gonna have me a brand new single reservoir stock master cylinder this evening. Now that I got all this sorted out though and I've got a good plan, I can go ahead and start putting the disc brake stuff on. And I'm gonna worry about brake lines later. First thing you wanna do with the tire still on the ground, let's go ahead and crack these six bolts loose. Now I can run my jack up under here and jack it up. Now I can go ahead and pull the wheel and tire off. I 
And then I'll go ahead and finish taking this hub off. Nine times out of 10, this is what you're gonna see in here. See how this nut is all chewed up? That's where somebody's took a screwdriver or a chisel or something to take it on and off. There's no way you can set up your wheel bearings the right way if you're doing it like that. I understand if you're like out on the trail and something happens and for whatever reason you gotta change this, but I'm gonna get that nut off and clean it up. I should have bought new ones. That's something to think about when you're doing this. I should have went ahead and ordered some new ones while I was doing it. But I think I can clean this one up. It doesn't look terrible. And I'll show you all the correct socket you use to take these on and off with. This is the correct socket you use. I think it's a two and an eighth inch socket. You can find these things literally anywhere. Everybody sells them. And hopefully that nut is not to the point I can't get this on. If, if it is too bad, I'll just knock it off with a chisel like somebody else did and get it cleaned up. There's that dude. Should be a washer. And then there's another nut up in there you gotta get to. I guess it's also chewed up. There's that one. It's a little bit chewier than the first one. Should be one more washer behind that. Uh, hopefully, this don't give us too much trouble coming off of here. The way you adjust these shoes in and out is they've got like a stud with a nut on it on both sides. And it just kind of works a lever that kind of pushes them out or lets them come in. I might have to adjust it out just a little bit to let this thing slip off easier. Or a big hammer might be the solution. These old drum brakes that have been sitting for a long time or hadn't been serviced in a long time are always a lot of fun. Usually like the shoes in here are either rusted to the drum itself or they've wore grooves in there where you can't get past them. I started out just trying to rotate it off. Then I tried them adjusters back there. I ended up actually cutting one of these adjuster nuts off because they were so boogered up, they were stripped out. Of course, I hit it with a hammer a bunch of times. I just wasn't having no luck. So my last resort is usually to undo this little wheel cylinder right here. You can see it moving down in there. That's what your brake hose runs to. That releases like the whole top portion of the assembly in there. The shoes and everything are tied to that. And then I just kind of pried around it. I didn't want to mess up this backing plate. I'll probably never reuse any of this stuff, but I don't like messing up good parts. I think I've about got this battle won though. There it is.
Honestly, it's not too bad. I've seen a lot worse than that. That right there kind of gives you a better idea of them adjusters I was talking about. This one, like I said, I drove it out. But it's just like an offset little stud right there. So it pushes that shoe in or out. So now I need these six bolts off of here and this backing plate will come off. And that's about as far as I've got to take this. Now, in reality, to do this disc brake conversion, this is as far as you've got to take this down. I'm going to go ahead and take this knuckle off, though, because I think once you're this deep into these axles, it's worth it to go ahead and instead of having these bolts that thread into this spindle right here and hold that on, all your weight is on this spindle right here. This is where your wheel bearings ride. These have a tendency, you can actually pull these threads out because it's not much material there. A great upgrade is you actually take some button heads. Now, I've got a whole video on doing a studded knuckle upgrade you can go check out. But it just puts the bolt head behind there, threads through there, so you're actually pulling behind. You're pulling on a stud instead of pulling on them threads. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this knuckle off and take care of that. So hopefully I can give you all a leg up on this stuff of everything you're going to need to order and think about to do this conversion. Now, hopefully your Jeep's in better shape than this one is. This one hasn't been fooled with, obviously, in a long time, since like the 90s. I should have thought to order some new hub seals right here. I got this one popped off. And look down in here. I don't think you want your wheel bearings to look that way. That is pretty bad. Hopefully, though, it'll clean up and be all right. I might be needing some new wheel bearings, too. All right, so I got this all back together and a lot cleaner than it was. It's not perfect, but I threw a little paint on it and got all that gunk off. So you can see now I've got six studs and still having them six bolts. That's going to hold the spindle on, which I got right here. And it's also going to hold on one of these caliper brackets from Brennan's Garage. I got all the spacers, the caliper brackets, that kind of stuff. Brennan cuts these out. They're awesome, really good quality. And for what you get, it's a really good price. That's what I'm going to be using to put the disc brakes on all this stuff. This is going to slide over about like that right there. And then we'll do lock washers and then nuts. Keep in mind too, if you decide to just order some longer hardware instead of doing the studded knuckle, because this is thicker than your stock backing plate, these bolts are fine thread, they're 3 8 24. That this caliper bracket goes in front of the spindle, not behind it. So you won't have to take this spindle off like I did. I just wanna say it one more time, make sure your caliper bracket goes in front of your spindle, not behind it. All right, so now I've got this to the point. I can go ahead and put my hub back on. Now, I went ahead and repacked that bearing. I put a new hub seal in right there. And I also put slightly longer wheel studs on here. For comparison, here's the stock one. And then here's the new one. So they're maybe, a, I don't know, a quarter inch longer. Maybe not that quite that much. I'm not sure if these are the ones I want to recommend, though. Because you can see that spline portion is about half as long as it should be. So I might look for a better option than these right here. Also, you're gonna have to press that drum off that hub. Earlier Jeeps, they actually had these wheel studs like swedged in and you've got to cut around them before they'll press out. That's something to keep in mind. If you're not careful, you'll mess up your hub and you'll break your drum. So first to go back in is this washer. Don't be, get confused with this one right here. Then your first nut, I went ahead and cleaned these up and tried to get rid of some of them burrs.
So I've got that torque down to 50 foot pounds. Then I rotate it back one flat. I've got a video just on how to properly set up your wheel bearings on here. So it'll be our next washer. And then the other nut. And then the last thing to do, you bend that washer over one of these flats. Go ahead and put my lock and hub back on. And the cover. Always be careful tightening up your lock and hubs because too much and you can actually crack them because they're just, a lot of them are just cast aluminum. So that's got this assembly all back together. So Brennan's kit takes advantage of using geo tracker brake parts because they're pretty easy to come by and it's a similar size vehicle. So the stop and power is more than adequate. I actually ordered for this Jeep some drilled and slotted rotors. Now for a lot of off-roading, if you're gonna be in a lot of mud and stuff, I probably wouldn't recommend these. I could see these getting caked up with mud, but I see this doing more street and light trail and car shows than like deep mud or anything. So this will just slide over your hub right here. Now on some Jeeps, you might have to like chamfer the back of these rotors to clear like the little beveled place or where the studs come out at. With these though, since I changed out the studs and that spline portion is shallower, I don't have to worry about that. Now, let me show y'all why I decided to go with longer wheel studs. In order to clear your stock wheels with your stock back spacing, you're gonna need some inch and a half spacers. I think one inch might be minimum. I've always done the inch and a half ones. The reason I went with longer wheel studs is your stock studs barely have enough engagement to work. I mean, they do work and they're probably fine. A lot of people run them without changing them. But while I was doing it, I thought I might as well go ahead and do it right in the safe way. So I went ahead and put the longer wheel studs on for these wheel spacers. Something else I like about using the wheel spacers is nothing holds these rotors on when the wheel's off besides when we put the caliper on. And you have these wheel spacers, that is gonna secure the rotor to the hub. So included in Brennan's kit, you're gonna get a couple of these flange bolts here. These are M12. These are what actually thread into the calipers here. And then you're gonna get some of these spacers right here. These are gonna kinda of go in between like the bracket and the caliper to get everything set up just right. Now I've heard people say one of the hardest parts of this conversion is actually loading up your calipers. It is a little strange if you've never done it before. So walk through it real quick. Like I was saying before, this kit uses geo tracker rotors and geo tracker calipers and brake pads. So all that stuff is pretty much geo tracker specific. Now I don't know anything about geo trackers. So if anybody watching works on geo trackers, maybe you know a better way to load these up, but this is how I figured out how to do it. So you're gonna have a couple of these clips right here. These are what your pads actually slide on. I found the easiest way to get these in. So you want this up inside this little slot right here so you come in from behind and it should just wiggle down in there into that clip it should look something like that right there sometimes you need a screwdriver to kind of help it seat all the way but they should kind of spring in there just like that right there the other side is the exact same thing And then I've messed this up before. There's this little piece. I don't know if that's like to tell you the pads are wore out. I'm not sure what the purpose of it is, but you want this piece pointing towards your bleeder screw. And this part is pretty similar to any other caliper you're gonna load up. It just goes up inside them sliders I just put in. And then this one will do the same thing. I 
All right, and that's got the caliper all loaded up. So now I can take all this stuff, move down here and get it bolted to the Jeep. I'm gonna move on to the back here and knock this out, get all the disc brake conversion parts done, and then we'll talk about plumbing and hoses and everything. Got another drum brake to fool with here. It looks like probably gonna be needing some new brake lines too, but like I said, we'll do that here after a while. I guess I'm gonna go get my big hammer and my pry bar and start working on this son of a gun. Well, that ended up being a lot easier than the first one. That thing just slid right off of there. Now, what holds this hub on back here, there's a big nut, and that nut should be torqued down to like 150 foot-pounds, I think. And it was just barely past finger tight, which is not good. I'm gonna guess somebody's been in here, maybe the brakes were locked up and they got them unstuck or something. Now, this hub is actually keyed on. You can see this key right here important to keep up with that it's also important to remember which way it comes out see that one end's got a taper that matches the taper on this axle right here if you put them in backwards you can actually end up splitting this hub because you can see right here it's pretty thin material pulling this back and plate off though is identical to the front one there's six bolts here so i'm just gonna go in there take all them out this whole assembly will come out together. You ain't got to fool with pulling off like the shoes or the wheel cylinder or anything. Should all just slide out in one piece. I went through here and got all this stuff cleaned up. Now, what you're gonna need out of this, you gotta keep this little dust shield here. It's like a little two-piece thing. And that's pretty much all we're gonna have to keep out of that. Something you gotta be conscious of with this stuff back here is orientation. This little hole down here at the bottom, that's a drain hole. So you gotta make sure all this stuff stacks upright because this has a hole right there. And then this dust shield has that little funnel and that's made to kinda funnel the stuff down through them holes and then finally work it out of there. So now I'm ready to put this caliper bracket on. I think I got the clock in correct here. Something to pay attention to. You can see where I drilled this hole. So there's a little weep hole behind that. And then this stuff all lines up in the same way. It's got this little funnel here, this little slant. It's supposed to help like keep water and junk out of your bearings, I guess. I didn't see where Brendan said to add this hole or not, but I need to go back through his directions. He's got them all on his website, how to do this whole thing. So now I got all that put back on the hub. So I pressed that drum off just like the other one. It came off pretty easy. I like these wheel studs a lot better in these rear hubs than I did the front ones. 
These are about half as thick, I guess. So them splines work out just right. I threw a little paint on this because you can see this part of the hub. Installing this though, you're gonna put the hub on and line it up with this key right here. And then we'll drive that key on afterwards. So like I said, pay attention to that taper. That taper goes in just like that right there. Now the key will move with the hub as we tighten this up. If you try and put the key on and slide the hub over it, it's got a tendency to push that key forward. And like I said, it's really easy to break that hub because there's not much material there. And it just wants to ramp up because of that chamfer on the end of that key. I've got the washer and this big nut. Now, like I said, when I took it off, this should not be finger tight or a hair past finger tight. I think the torque spec on this it's 150 foot pounds. So I have to go grab my bigger torque wrench and I'll tighten this thing down probably after I put the wheel on. I'll probably hit it with the impact a little bit, just snug it up. And then once I get the tire and stuff back on it, that's the easiest way to torque this down. I've got a one and seven sixteenth socket. I thought I might as well just go ahead and see if it'll torque down like this. I'm just spinning the other tire now. So now I'm ready to put my rotor on. And then on top of that, my wheel spacer. Got my other caliper loaded up here. Something else to remember, you always want your bleeder screw pointing up because that's the only way you're ever gonna get all the air out of it. These are marked though, with an L and an R to kind of help keep you straight. L is driver side, R is passenger side. So then my spacer goes between the caliper and that bracket, and then the bolt. Clocking was something I was a little concerned about because in between these two holes up here, I wasn't sure if it needed to be more this way or how it's gonna work out, but I think this is the ideal setup right here. It's pretty much exactly the way the front one is, I think. You gotta think about where your hose connects at, which is right here. So the hose will kind of come down and then I guess sweep up over here to this axle. I think this is a, a good setup. And of course the wheel and the tire and everything will keep this all protected. So you don't really have to worry about anything snagging a hose up in here or anything. So now I need to throw that wheel and tire back on so I can torque this down. You gotta put a cotter pin through there too. Grease cap and this side will be done. So that's got the rear brakes knocked out. So I've got this whole driver's side done now. Now I gotta take everything I did over here and mirror it on the other side. It's the same exact steps as what I did over here. One thing I was on the fence about, and now I've made up my mind, is I need hubcaps back here. I think it's weird having that big space right there. You can buy chrome hubcaps pretty cheap like on Amazon or something. So I'm gonna get a couple of them to fill in that gap. They'll just make it look more complete, more finished. Something I did wanna show y'all, so it does make the stance of the Jeep a little bit wider. You can really notice it right here sticking past the fender. Also back here, it is gonna poke out a little bit. Now these are eight inch wide wheels and the tires are 235, 75, 15s. So that doesn't help anything. 
I don't mind it. I think it looks good. It is going to sling a little mud up on the Jeep, but I don't mind that. The wider stance too, it does make it a hair safer. So I'm adding three inches overall to the wheel mounting surface. Like I said, I got to do the other side and then I'll start doing some brake hoses, brake lines. I got a new master cylinder in. So I'm about halfway there. The last kind of custom thing you got to do to finish out this brake conversion. And then from here on out, everything is just stock Jeep components. It's going to be your brake hoses. And that's the hose that goes from the caliper to the frame or to your axle. Now, in my case, I'm using some Honda Accord, I think 85 or 86 Honda Accord brake lines. On Brennan's website, he's got like a whole list of part numbers and hoses that work for this. I think S10 brake hoses are really popular. This part is pretty straightforward. So right here is where the hose is gonna go in at. Something to keep in mind, and I'll have these linked down in the description with all the other parts. The last time I did this, the calipers I ordered came with the banjo bolts. These are M10 by one banjo bolts. So that's just something to keep in mind. The way this goes together, you're gonna have the banjo bolt, copper washer, the hose, and then another copper washer. What's nice is there's this little catch right here that holds this in and keeps it from rotating. And then fortunately on the CJ5, my 3B didn't have this. There's a factory tab here where the brake hose used to go at. Over on the 3B, I just did the same thing. I just had to weld it to the frame. Now from stock, this will be a round hole. I did take just a little like rat tail file or whatever, went in there and opened up the corners to accept this right here. So you see this shape, that right there, that little flat, that's what keeps this from being able to rotate and turn and stuff. So that's how you can get like a nice loop or some kind of nice bend out of this where it stays out of the way, but it still works. Something really easy to forget, and I say that because I forgot them, is these little brake hose retaining clips. These go on the other side of that bracket and that's what holds that hose on. I'll have these linked down below too. AutoZone had them. Okay, maybe one more little deviation from stock, and then I promise everything else from here on is stock. So this hose right here, like I said down here, M10 by one banjo bolt. This end right here also is M10 by one. Now, fortunately, you can see that brake line right here, the old one that went there. It's a short little brake line that comes off right there. That'll be an easy one to fix. What I'm gonna do, I've just got some 3 16 brake line. I'm gonna make up a brand new one that'll be standard on that end to hook into the stock Jeep stuff. And I'll put an M10 by one brake line fitting right here. That'll adapt the stock line to this Honda Accord brake line. And then everything else from here is just stock. So I've got a couple days worth of brake lines it looks like to redo. And I've got a new master cylinder. Hopefully y'all aren't too disappointed in me. But I looked into doing that dual reservoir conversion and with the tub on, it's gonna be a real pain in the butt. So I ended up just getting a stock replacement. I don't wanna waste a bunch of time trying to make that dual reservoir work. I know it will work, it's just really tight in there. With the tub on, it's really hard to do. And I wanna show y'all that you can run a stock master cylinder with this conversion and not have to worry about anything. Now on the rear axle, it'll be the same thing. I'll have one of the brake hoses coming off of here. But I'm going to route mine down the axle tube into that little three-way block piece that's stock on these where the hose is coming down at. So I'll run a hose to the axle somewhere, then I'll run a hard line up to there, use the factory Jeep hose from there. I'll probably end up welding a similar tab onto this rear axle just like is up there on the front. I do like the idea on the rear though, having that stock hose right there in the middle, and it should be pretty simple. A couple things I want to show y'all real quick. First, we think about that new chrome center cap there. While I was out picking up stuff, thought I might as well go ahead and get a pair of them. And that looks so much better than having that big just hole right there. It fills it in, finishes it off nice. If you go to pick up some, you're looking for a four and a quarter inch hub. That's what these old Jeeps take. Main thing I want to show y'all though is my clearance between my caliper and that brake hose right there. 
Then I'll slide this off here. This is the setup I decided to use back here. You can see there's plenty of room between the hose and the tire. I just welded me a little tab on right down here. Real similar to what's up front. Got the retaining clip there. While I was doing it, I just went ahead and made two of them. Do the same thing, mirror everything over on the other side. I think this is a really clean way to do this right here. Well, y'all, I think I about got this thing wrapped up. I've got disc brakes on all four corners of this Jeep now. Got all the hoses mounted up and going to the calipers. I've got brand new brake lines. I went ahead and just replaced everything so everything's nice and new, safe, ready to go. And I topped it off with a brand new stock master cylinder. We'll do that door reservoir later on down the road. What's important though is today, I take this thing out, take it for a real test drive. I guess this will really be like its maiden voyage because up till now, Driving without any brakes was real sketchy, so I had to be super careful what I was doing with it. I'm excited to fire this thing up though, see how these brakes work. gonna be honest y'all i'm very happy with the way these brakes worked out stops on the dime it feels great for manual brakes they stop amazing now like i said earlier in this video if you want to get one of these brake kits you need to go to brennansgarage.com he's got kits to do a single axle or all four wheels like i did comes with all the hardware and the spacers all you really have to do is buy like rotors calipers brake pads and the hoses it's an excellent kit though, something you can totally do on a Saturday. Now, if your Jeep is like mine and it's not been serviced or taken care of in a very long time, it might take a little bit longer than a weekend. So I had to clean all them knuckles up and everything. Of course, I did the studded knuckle upgrade. I would encourage y'all to go check out that video. It's really easy to do. It's not that expensive and it really does make your front axle a lot stronger. Something else I would recommend, if you don't know that the seals and stuff have been changed in your axles recently, if you don't know that they're still good, maybe go ahead and order all the knuckle seals and the rear axle seal, all that stuff. So you'll have it on hand, the wheel bearings, the hub seal, all that stuff that I've replaced. That way, while you're in there, you can just go ahead and knock all that stuff out while you're at it. Now this conversion really doesn't require any special tools. I did make all my brake lines here because I do have one of those Eastwood brake line kits. That thing paid for itself on the first job. I can't brag about it enough. And if your brake lines are in good shape, unlike mine were, you won't have to worry about changing all them. And I did find Napa has like a 3 16th to a 10 millimeter conversion little brass piece. I'll put the part number and show you all that thing. So potentially you could probably screw that into the brake hose that would convert it over to a 3 16 line. And you probably just use your stock lines. You wouldn't have to redo anything. It's a big day for the old CJ5 though, because now I can finally drive it around without having to worry about where I'm going or where I'm gonna have to roll to a stop at. I'm ready to take this thing on some big adventures, but before I can do any of that, 
There's a few little maintenance things I've got to do. I want to do all the fluids, change everything. Because I have no idea what's what, what's in there. They might've used the wrong fluid at one point, who knows. I've got to fix the janky exhaust on it. It's no good, it leaks, there's no muffler. I've got a whole stock kit I'm gonna throw on it. It sure needs a roll bar. I'm a fan of roll bars, I'd rather not die. I've got to get rid of that boat tank, put a real fuel system in it, a real gas tank. And a few little odds and ends, I've got to do a little bit of wiring, get the lights going, kind of clean up the dash in the interior. But today was a big item checked off the list. Y'all are gonna be seeing a bunch more videos on this thing throughout the year. I've got all kinds of things I wanna to do to it. I've also got some really special parts I'm gonna throw at this thing once I get all the other stuff taken care of. As usual, everything used in this video, I'll have linked down in the description, all the part numbers, and how you can do this to your Jeep. I really appreciate y'all checking out this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see y'all next time.